Hi guys and welcome to my second book review of 2021. The second book I read this year is one that was actually part of the book club I am in, which is a book club run by Jazz over at Red Panda Reads, and that was the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaeffer and Anne Barrows. This book was a really nice escape. Obviously it has some not so nice sections. This is a book set just after the war, but it was a really nice place to escape to, especially right now where the world is in a bit of a state with the COVID pandemic and I'm sure a lot of people are feeling quite alone. This was a way to escape to somewhere friendly and warm and welcoming. As in my last review, I will split this review into no spoilers and spoilers and I will warn you when they will change. First, I'll read you the blurb of this book. The war is over. Juliet Ashton is grappling with writer's block when she receives a letter from Dorsey Adams of Guernsey, a total stranger living halfway across the channel who has come across her name written in a second-hand book. Juliet begins writing to Dorsey and in time to everyone in the extraordinary Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. The society tell Juliet about life on the island and the dark years spent under the shadow of German occupation. Drawn into their irresistible world, Juliet sets sail for Guernsey, changing her life and theirs forever. If you haven't read this book, I do also recommend watching the film. The film is not filmed in Guernsey, which was a sore point for someone in the book club because she's actually from Guernsey. So bear that in mind when you watch it, it's not really in Guernsey. This book, however, she said, is quite accurate to Guernsey itself. First of all, I enjoyed reading this. It wasn't gripping. It wasn't a book that I thought about when I wasn't reading it, but it was something at the end of a long day, I was quite happy to pick up and read a few letters in it. And it made you feel calm and relaxed, which is really, really pleasant to do. Unlike most books, this one is written in letter format. So like how Bridget Jones's diary is written in diary form, this one is all made up of letters, which is really helpful because one of the things I found difficult in this book was telling the characters apart. Obviously every letter tells you who it's to and who's it from at the beginning of the letter, so this does help, but I don't know whether this difficulty with characters was due to the writing style or due to how English comes across in writing. It's a conversation I had with a Dutch friend of mine, which was the English language is really interesting because we change verbally on how we speak and it changes depending on where you're from, how you speak to people, but our written language hasn't and doesn't change that often, especially not when we write formally, which in these days is probably more the style you would write a letter in. So either the characterization wasn't as good as I wanted it to be, or it's true to form about the English language itself. The actual main character, Juliet, I quite liked her. She's obviously a woman in a time when it was still quite difficult to fend for yourself and be allowed to live the life that you want to live. And she does that, which I do find quite refreshing. Overall, the book, it gave me a few laughs. It made me smile, made me sad. It never gripped me, but it was a very nice escape. Now I'm going to move on to a few spoilers. So if you haven't read this book and you don't want to know any spoilers, switch to the end of this video now. Spoiler alert. <laughs> My favorite character was actually Sydney. He is the publisher and brother of Juliet's best friend and sort of comes across almost as Juliet's brother as well. And I thought he was just such a lovely character, really nice guy. And something else which, which was refreshing in the book is that he's actually gay. And when Isola, another really nice character in the book, finds this out, she accepts him instantly, which was a rare thing. When you think about the war just finished or you think about how your grandparents or great grandparents would respond to someone being gay, they struggle with this idea because it wasn't allowed. It wasn't seen as a good thing. It wasn't seen as normal. Obviously now we have grown up and the world is a much better place 
and England is a much better place and obviously there's nothing wrong with being gay, lesbian, straight, whatever, everything is fine. But for the time period this is set, it would have been an issue. So the fact that the characters who knew Sydney was gay didn't bat an eyelid was really nice to see. Another thing I liked about this book was, I think I, I think I actually find this in a lot of sort of more period books where sex isn't openly talked about, that when they have a little subtle bit about sex in there, it always makes me giggle. So one of my favourite parts in this book is some of the letters between Juliet and Mark. And it is when Mark is dropping her off at the ferry to go to Guernsey. So the letters are as follows. From Mark to Juliet. No lectures, however all other forms of persuasion will be employed. Mark. From Juliet to Mark. Can't scare me. What can you possibly do while driving? Juliet. Mark to Juliet. You'd be surprised. See you tomorrow. M. I love also how in the previous letters he marks it as Mark, but that one he marks as M, which made us both giggle out loud because even though sex is sex and there's nothing laughable or giggly really about the mention of it, but because this book is set after the war and there's nothing else in here that is really sexual, the little hints of sexuality and the idea of what could Mark do whilst driving um, with Julia in the car, I don't know, it just made us snigger a little bit. Another really nice thing I liked was that at the end of the book she asked him, which is so sweet and so modern and just did not happen in those days. It's refreshing to read that in literature where if we really look into the books on our shelves, there's not many where the woman asks the man to marry him. Now on to the bits I didn't like and one major thing that I wasn't the only one in the book club who didn't like it, there were a few people who you know glossed over it because it is something that was around in that time period, but I personally felt very uncomfortable and the fact that it didn't come back I already knew the time period, I didn't need any more reminders of where Julia is in history, but they mentioned the unmentionable dolls in this, and I don't want to say the word, um, but I'm sure you all know the dolls I am talking about. They are banned, you cannot get them anymore, you haven't been able to get them since I was maybe in high school. I remember when I was in middle school asking my mum what one was when I saw them in like an antique shop and my stepdad at the time laughed and told me what they were. My mum told me that they weren't very good, but that they were a popular toy when they were younger. And it just wasn't necessary. These, all it was, was hid the toy for before Mark came to her house. So it was sort of the transition between being a girl and being a woman, because a man is coming into your private place. But it could have been any toy. If she'd had a normal teddy, that would have done the same thing. The only reason I can think that the author mentioned this doll is for world building and placing the audience in that time period, which personally I didn't think it needed. We already know where we are, unnecessary, and I wish they'd taken it out on the second run. Another thing that wasn't good is what I mentioned at the beginning, which was that the characters were all very similar in how they wrote. This got a little bit better once Juliet was on Guernsey because she was writing about the characters, so you didn't need to tell so many apart, but they were hard to recognise at times. And if it didn't have their names at the top of letters, you could easily be mistaken for who was who. Now, I don't know if this is because of, as I said, the English writing style is quite similar. And especially in those days, you may have written more formally. Something that my partner really struggled with was it's all telling. Unlike most modern books where you always have the argument of show versus tell, because this book is in the format of letters, Juliet or the other characters are always telling you what is happening and telling you where they are and telling you who is who and who's done what, rather than you as the reader experiencing it yourself, which is partly why I feel it was less gripping than perhaps it should have been. Back to the good though, I did, I wouldn't say enjoy because it's not something you can enjoy, but I found the descriptions of the concentration camps and the memories from other people living on Guernsey and the letters from them telling Juliet what they did during the war, very interesting. And I really hope some of them are true, 
but I need to do my research and see if there really was a boy who would whistle behind the soldiers as they walked just to creep them out a little bit on their walk home at night or that there really were pigs hidden around the place and people would move a dead pig around in order to get the death certificate of the pig so they could keep one. It's something I would really like to know if it's true or not. All in all, I did enjoy reading this book. It wasn't gripping, but it was relaxing and a nice way to escape the modern world and the stresses in it. Guernsey sounds like such a beautiful island and the characters are all mainly so lovely that who wouldn't want to escape here? It sounds like bliss. So I think I'm slightly biased because of the way the world is right now and the fact that we can't escape to nice little islands like this for a week during our holidays means I maybe enjoyed it more than I normally would have. But all in all, I would recommend it just as a nice light read. And I would give this book a six out of 10 stars. And thank you guys so much for watching my second book review of 2021. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to see it as soon as I upload, click that little bell down below. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or Tumblr. I post general bookish pictures as well as my writing tips and unboxings on there. And thanks for watching guys. Bye.